Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Today I am showing you how to make and apply vinyl decals on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So you can decorate just about anything with vinyl. I know because I put vinyl on mugs, cricket machines, canvases, ornaments, walls, and so much more. It's just so easy to do. I want to be sure you know how to do it too. And you probably already have something at your place right now that's just begging for a little vinyl personalization, like your kitchen appliances. They work hard for us and deserve a little spicing up. And you can make vinyl decals that fit perfectly on your favorite kitchen appliances. They'll be the talk of the neighborhood. They <laughs> you can put vinyl decals on your Instant Pot, KitchenAid mixer, Keurig, or your blender. And now when we talk about making and applying vinyl decals, we mean adhesive vinyl. This is a vinyl with a self-adhesive backing. Vinyl like this comes in both permanent and removable variations. And while you might at first think that removable vinyl would definitely be the best, it's not necessarily. Removable vinyl is intended for things like walls and other porous or fragile surfaces that could be damaged by the adhesive on backing on the vinyl. But surfaces like metal, glass, ceramic, that's what you're gonna find in most things in your kitchen, are best direct decorated with permanent adhesive vinyl because it will stick better and you can remove it from these hard surfaces later if you really want to. And you can wash these better without them falling off. Now, I get a lot of questions about what brand vinyl works best for decals like this. I did a test earlier this year with a variety of vinyls, and honestly, I just keep coming back to Cricut Permanent Vinyl. It does a great job, it comes in lots of colors and styles, and it's really easy to get at craft stores. I also like Oracle 651, which I feel is of comparable quality, but it's harder for me to get, and thus I just don't use it that much. Now, I wouldn't recommend any other vinyl, however. Now, you might see store brands, and sometimes they're at great discounts, but you're taking a risk with those. Also, it's important that you use reasonably fresh vinyl, as it does have a shelf life of about one to two years. If your vinyl is older than two years, and you haven't yet applied it to something like your kitchen appliance, it's time to get some new vinyl. Now for this vinyl decal tutorial, I'm going to use Cricut Premium Vinyl, the, per the permanent stuff. And if you're not sure whether what you have is permanent or not, it says on the label, as well as on the carrier sheet. Well, usually it says on the carrier sheet. Removable vinyl is also almost always matte, not glossy, and it just feels less sticky. You can sometimes slide a small piece of it around on the carrier sheet super easily. That said, you, you can use remo removable vinyl if you really intend to take it off soon because it probably won't last all that long. It's your choice. You can use vinyl of any color or style, but in my experience, some vinyls such as glitter and foil are harder to weed, harder to apply, and they're less likely to stay put. So if you're a beginner, I just avoid those and stick with a basic solid color vinyl. I will, however, show you what happened when I tried to put foil vinyl, foil adhesive vinyl on my coffee maker so you can see for yourself. In addition to the vinyl, you need transfer tape, uh, which is an adhesive sheet that you put over your decal to transfer it onto your surface. I'm using Cricut transfer tape, and it's important to note that you wanna use the regular transfer tape, not the strong grip stuff, okay? You'll also want a weeder, uh, and a scraper, and a ruler or measuring tape, rubbing alcohol, and a lint-free towel, or something else that's lint-free, like a coffee filter. Of course, you need a way to cut out your vinyl decal, I use and recommend a Cricut cutting machine, and that's what I'm using for this tutorial, and I'll be showing you how to do that uh, with the Cricut. Last but not least, you need a vinyl decal design. I have eight pre-made designs with beautiful hand lettering for you to use, or you can design your own. So let me show you where to find my free designs on my blog at jennifermaker.com, and then we'll head over to Cricut Design Space to make our own vinyl decals, and then I will show you how you actually put the vinyl decal onto, how well, how I put it onto my Instant Pot, my mixer, and my Keurig. Step one, measure your surface. 
The first thing you should do is measure the available surface for a vinyl decal with a ruler or measuring tape. You want to know both the height and width of the space available, as well as whether or not there are any dials, bolts, cords, or unusual features that you need to work around. Make a note of the surface space available as you'll need it in the next step. Step two, make a vinyl decal design or use my free SVG files. You can make your own vinyl decal designs in Cricut Design Space or use my free kitchen appliance vinyl decal patterns in SVG cut files. My kitchen appliance design files contain eight different designs that you can use to decorate your Instant Pot or Crock Pot, your Keurig Coffee Pot, or whatever coffee pot you have, your KitchenAid mixer or other stand mixer, or your blender. I keep my free designs on my blog at jennifermaker.com. Just head on over there and look for the red bar at the top, and under Libraries, click on Enter the Library. This is where I keep all of my free files. The easiest way to find something on this page is to search for it with Command F or Control F, and I recommend you type in Kitchen Appliance. And here are my vinyl decals. You can just click that. It downloads to your computer or device. You click Open. And here's what's inside that file. We've got SVG, DXF, and PDF files. Now let me show you how to upload the SVG file to Cricut Design Space so you can customize it for your appliance or make your own decal. So here we are in Cricut Design Space, and we're gonna upload that SVG file that has my pre-made decals in it so that you can use them if you'd like. You want to click on Upload, and then Upload Image and Browse and you're looking for the SVG file, which is right here, and you click Open. It uploads to your software, and you click Save. Once it's saved, you wanna select it and click Insert Images to put it onto your canvas. And this is what it looks like when it first uploads. There's the eight designs. Now, the simplest thing to do is simply choose one of these designs that works for you and fits your appliance based on your measurements in step one. And if that's what you wanna do, all you do is go to ungroup, right over here in the upper right corner. And so then now each thing is individual. Pick the one that you want. Let's say, let's do uh, mixing up sweet memories, which is right here. I'm gonna kind of move this down. Select the rest of them, group them back up by clicking on group, and then click the eye icon to hide them completely from your canvas. Now all you have left is mixing up sweet goodness. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. So we're going to work with this one. I want to put this one onto my KitchenAid mixer, and we need to see if we need to size it properly for my mixer, especially given that there's an unusual screw bolt thing on it. So based on our measurements, we have a seven inch wide by three inch height area that would be ideal for a decal. So to size this properly, I'm gonna click on shapes over here on the left and choose square. And I'm gonna resize this square to be that seven inches by three inches measurement that I, I took before. To do that, I'm gonna just literally type in the uh, dimensions up here at the top, but I have to click on the icon, I'm sorry, the lock button to change the size of the height and width individually. There we go. So this is the space that I have available on my KitchenAid mixer. And I'm gonna change the color just so I can keep that straight in my head. Now, there was a bolt on it, and I wanna take that into account. So I'm just gonna go back over to shapes and choose circle, and I'm just gonna go ahead and resize it to something bolt-shaped, kind of something like this. Now, based on my measurements, it was around the three-inch mark. So if I move this over here, that bolt was right about there. Okay, so now let's take our decal and try to make that work. I'm gonna bring this to the front and put it right over our area. Now this is, first of all, it's a little bit big. Let's uh, bring it in a little bit by clicking the resize handle. So I'm just gonna click and drag that because we don't want it to go edge to edge. It'll look too crowded and messy. You always wanna have a good margin around any design that you put. Any vinyl decal should have a good margin. It's just good design principles. All right, 
So of course, I'm sure that you can see the problem here just like I can. This bolt here is right smack dab in the middle of goodness, which is not good. <laughs> this is not good. But I believe that we could move some things over, slide them over to the left. Now, and I want to show you how to do that using the contour command very quickly. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of this design that I've resized. I'm just going to right click on it and choose duplicate. So I'm going to sort of drag this down here so I have it. It's always a good idea to have a copy of whenever you're about to go to edit something. Now what I want to do is use the contour tool and remove the word goodness and these little uh, droplets over here. So I'm going to click on this design and I'm going to click on contour in the lower right hand corner. And I'm going to individually select each of these letters in goodness to hide it. That's how you get rid of all of these. So I'm just clicking each shape. And once it's a light color, you know it's gone away. There we go. So goodness is no longer there. And I'm going to get rid of those two droplets and press the X to close the window. And that worked. So now goodness is not there anymore, right? But I still want it there, so I'm going to go down to this copy that I made, and I'm, on this one, I'm going to click Contour as well, but I'm going to hide everything on it, including this. So everything is gone now, and I want just the word goodness at the bottom to show up. So I'm going to select all of these letters just like this, just clicking on all of them. And we can tell at the bottom whether I've got it or not getting there. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now we have just goodness from this design. So I'm going to close the window. And we can now move this up into position. And of course, we have the same issue as before. It is overlapping our bolt. So I am going to resize it a little bit with the resize handle and move it over into position here. Just like this. That looks a lot better, don't you think? So we can still see this. It still says mixing up sweet goodness, but it's, you know, part of our letters are not going to get blocked by some big bolt that is not any good. And of course, you can finesse this more if you want. You can use the contour to sort of move these droplets over a little bit more over here. But I actually think this looks just great. I like it. And I mean, if we want, we could even kind of do it something like this, right? We can position it. And I think this looks great. I'm going to do I'm going to do this. So, we want to go ahead and delete our rectangle and our bolt. Um, move this to the back so that we can we can select that circle. There we go. Excellent. Now, because we uh, separated these this design into two parts so that we could rearrange things, we need to be sure to attach those two parts again. So, we're going to I'm going to click and drag everything here to select both of the layers. So we can see over here in the right that we have both of these layers selected because they're darker gray. And then I'm going to click attach and now they will stay together and cut together. And that's very important. And that's all we really have to do to modify and customize this decal for our own purposes. And of course, if you want to make something completely original, you can. You just do the same thing that I did. You create a box that is the same size of the space available on your uh, machine, on your kitchen appliance, and then you create the text and you, you bring in some elements. For example, you could just click on shapes. We can do square. We wanted to, let's say, make uh, something for the Keurig. And I believe that it is uh, three by five the little space underneath underneath there. I have to double check that, but I think that's what it is. And I'll just change this to something similar to what color it is. And then I can just click on text and I can say, I, this is silly, <laughs> love copy. I mean, this is totally true, but I mean, it's a little bit silly. I don't know, whatever, it's fine. Just put, I love coffee here. And maybe we have a picture of a coffee cup, right? So I can just go to images and type in coffee and I'm sure there will be something in Cricut Access. Well, I mean, I've got some, oh, here we go. This is super cute. Let's insert this here. It'll show up up here and we'll drag it down here so we can do this. I love coffee. 
That's a little bit silly. And we can change the font to something more interesting. Let's change it to Amarillo, which is a cute font on my system. I love coffee. Let's bring the letter spacing in a bit so that the letters are touching. Because <laughs> right now it doesn't look very good. Whenever you do cursive like this, it always will look better if you uh, allow your letters to touch. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to make the line spacing a little bit better. I suppose I should have picked something easier. <laughs> But still you get the idea. So there's I love coffee and a coffee mug, right? So you can make your own decals however you want, right? You can write, the you can put your name on everything if you wanted to. <laughs> Whatever you want. That's the cool thing about using something like Cricut Design Space and having a Cricut cutting machine is like really you get to do whatever you want. And then we want to get rid of the box because we know that's the right size and we select both of the or everything in our design and we click attach and that's it it's ready to go all right so let me show you how to cut out our mixer our mixer decal um, on your vinyl and then we're going to apply it to the mixer so you can see how that works all we need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and hide this one so we're not gonna do that one right now all we need to do is click on make it and make sure your design looks good on your mat make sure you're, this is where you're going to double check that you actually attached everything because it'll things will appear in the right spot and you want to select your machine and then choose uh, the right material we're going to use regular permanent vinyl Cricut premium vinyl for this project so that's really simple we just search on vinyl and we choose premium vinyl and that's it let's cut this out Step three, cut out your vinyl decal design. Using a green standard grip mat, place your adhesive vinyl face up on the cutting mat. Make sure you have the fine point blade in your Cricut machine. Load the mat and press the flashing button to begin cutting. Step four, weed your decal and apply transfer tape. Now weed your design carefully, removing all of the excess vinyl. Go slow and be patient. Weeding is a love it or hate it thing. And even if you really dislike it like me, you can still get the job done with some patience and grace. I find that if I keep or return my vinyl to a cutting mat, a sticky cutting mat, it's a lot easier to weed because it stays flat and stays put. Once your design is weeded, cut a piece of transfer tape the same size as your design. Remove the backing from the transfer tape and apply the transfer tape to your vinyl decal by holding the transfer tape in the shape of a taco like this. And then you put the bottom of your taco onto the middle of your design. Smooth the tape over the decal from the center outward. This will help prevent wrinkles and bubbles. With the transfer tape still in place, use a scraper tool or another hard and flat edged item like a store loyalty card or credit card to transfer the vinyl decal design onto the transfer tape. It's important to scrape it really well to transfer the vinyl decal. So you might have to do it a couple times to get it really well adhered. Step five, prepare your surface for the vinyl decal. Wipe down the area where you will be applying the design with rubbing alcohol and a lint-free towel or another lint-free thing like a coffee filter. Do not use window cleaner as this will leave a residue. Be sure to allow your surface to dry fully before moving on to the next step. Step six, apply the design to your appliance. Carefully peel the carrier sheet off of the vinyl decal. If little bits of the decal don't want to transfer onto your tape, scrape it again really carefully and pay careful attention to those problem areas. Now place your design on your surface, being mindful that it is straight and centered to the best of your ability. If it isn't, you can usually peel it up and reposition it so long as you haven't yet pressed it down onto your surface. Now, if you have any problems getting your decal to go around curved surfaces, like the top of my KitchenAid mixer here, you can make small cuts in the transfer tape around where your vinyl is, not where your vinyl is, but just sort of around it. And this will help the vinyl follow the curve and lay flat. Now using a scraper tool, scrape the surface of the transfer tape down to transfer the design 
to your appliance. Once you've done that, just pick up a corner of the transfer tape and slowly remove it from your decal. And that's it. See how easy that is? This is a simple and fun way to personalize your appliances or really anything else in your house that might need a little personalization or a little cheering up or a little whatever, something just to make you smile or perhaps just to stand out a little bit. Okay, now I promised you I would tell you what happened when I tried to use foil vinyl. So I had this great idea to put copper foil on my copper Keurig. I mean, that would have looked amazing, right? So I cut it out and it would not weed. So I thought, well, I must have not, even though I chose foil adhesive, I must not have gotten the pressure right. So I went in and I modified my material settings in Cricut and I increased the pressure and I cut it again. And it was better this time, but it was still ripping in places and it wasn't working. So I went in and I cleaned my blade by using a piece of balled up aluminum foil to make sure that there was no debris or oxidation. And then I cut it again. And it definitely cut better the third time. And I was able to get a lot of it until I got to the letters. The, this, this design does not lend itself to any kind of vinyl that is at all finicky, such as foil. And you always need to be mindful of what you're trying to cut out and what you're trying to cut it out from. And in this case, I totally made a mistake. This, this was just too fine of a design for something as stiff as a foil vinyl, which is much better for larger areas. And I tried, I really tried to get this third one to weed, but I just couldn't get it. Now, if I was simply cutting out a picture of a coffee mug and not an outline of a coffee mug, but like a solid image of a coffee mug. I'm sure it would have been fine. So always pay attention to how detailed your image is when you're trying to cut something out onto difficult materials, such as foil adhesive or glitter cardstock or glitter vinyl or, you know, any of those sorts of things. The smaller and more detailed your image gets, the harder it's going to be. In the end, I just decided to cut this out in regular old pink vinyl because I thought pink was cute and it would cheer me up in the morning when I would see it when I was getting my coffee. And it looks great and I'm happy with it. So what would you decorate with vinyl? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. And if you've got any questions about how to make or apply vinyl decals, you can also leave a question here or ask over in our awesome Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And if you need a Cricut to decorate, you could win one in my Cricut giveaway that's going on right now. You can enter and get all the details over at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut giveaway. That's it for today. Tomorrow, I'll be back to show you how to make an awesome bleached stencil shirt. This is so cool and you're going to absolutely love this. I did this for the first time when I was at Cricut headquarters a few months ago. You might've seen that video. This is gonna be better. Remember, I am always open to your project ideas. If you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm -hmm.